and you're back here on Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and today we have a very special Think Tech show. I'm very happy to, to be talking here with three lovely women about Tech Savvy, an upcoming uh, conference for young women, girls, uh, all about technology, science, <laughs> mathematics, engineering, all those exciting things, right? That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we have Lauren, Anna, and Marisa here, That's all as committee chairs on various tech-savvy committees, right? That's so organizing right. this mm -hmm. whole conference. Mm -hmm. So they're going to give us a uh, lowdown on, on what this thing is coming up on May 21st. You want to get that That's out right. Right, right away? All day long? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. So who wants to start? Lauren, why don't you give us a quick overview? A quick overview. So, Tech Savvy is a full day conference for middle school girls. It's kind of aimed at sixth through ninth grade range, and it's really focusing. Although it's tech is in the title, it's it's really kind of broadly STEM: science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And um, it's a full day program for students and for adults with a, a bunch of various components that mm -hmm. will. Yeah. We can share with you as we go. Yeah, the, the three major components of the, the day are a tech session in the morning where they actually see women in the fields of STEM doing the presentation, so they see role models. Okay. And then in the afternoon there are two sessions. Half the girls go to a savvy skills session, which talks about the softer skills like communication, internet safety, things like that, again with women presenters. The other half are at College Savvy which is a little a mini fair, college fair for girls. And, but the difference between a college fair and college savvy are that we ask the representatives from the colleges and organizations to interview the girls to draw out their interests and then point them in a direction where they might use their organization to get to a STEM uh, college degree or a, a, a career in, in STEM. So that's the big uh, picture of the day. And then we had, at the very end of the day, we have a, a um, keynote speaker uh -huh. and this year we're very lucky to have a woman pilot oh yes okay speaking of that woman pilot i think we have a uh, she was gonna be here but couldn't be here but but send us a video right hi everyone my name is sarah hudgens and i'm a captain here at mokulele airlines i'm sorry i can't join you today but i am looking forward to seeing you at the tech savvy conference on may 21st at hpu um we'll be talking about my personal path and what is important about supporting girls and women in stem fields science technology engineering and math and aviation i'll see you there so that's great that this, so you get this combination of some hands-on stuff, some role models, some sort of almost coaching kind of experiences. Uh, excellent. It this, this sounds like, like a rich program. Mm -hmm. And you, this, you've done this before. You did this, I know, last year. Yep. Uh, this is our second year. Second year. Uh, okay. And is this part of a national effort or is this just a, a real local thing? Yeah. It's um, done by all different branches across the country. Uh, it started in Buffalo, New York. and. It's a grant process, so you submit a grant and you receive funds from the national organization to help put on the uh, Tech Savvy Conference. Uh -huh. And we're one of 22 this year. Oh, excellent, excellent. So middle school girls all around the country will be doing the same kind of thing, mm -hmm. all on the same day? No, oh, not okay. the same day. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> that could, that could, be, could be too much. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't, why don't you uh, walk us through what, what, a, what a, a girl might experience? Okay, so, so um, one of the, the girls who will come for the day long will, will register. They have actually would have registered online already, so they're actually checking in. Okay. They're checking in, and one of our sponsors has uh, chosen to help us with check-in, and that was Microsoft. They were part of uh, our uh, Tech Savvy last year, and they're uh, supporting us again this year. So they'll be checking in, the girls, and what they'll be um, receiving is a shirt, a tote, some items. Uh, from our different sponsors as well as um, uh, a lanyard with Tech Savvy. Uh, once they've checked in, there'll be, uh, there'll be an orientation in the beginning as well as a, a, a continental breakfast. Help me along, ladies, yeah. Yeah, in case right. I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> that's right, continental, continental breakfast. Continental breakfast, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll go in uh, along with the parents. So this is a unique program as well because we have a component that allows the parents to come and we educate the parents. So they're gonna be with their, their uh, girls, their um, child, uh, in the orientation in the beginning. Uh, we will let them know how the day is run. Uh, like the first portion, it is the tech savvy. So they're gonna go to hands-on workshops that they've chosen beforehand okay. to um, <clears throat> experience uh, what it is like for those um, different fields. Uh, last year, 
Uh, we had quite a bit of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren's more a debt of what's coming up, some of the samples. Yeah, we, we have a few confirmed sessions already for Tech Savvy uh, for the STEM workshop. So one mm -hmm. of the confirmed sessions we have is called the Nose Nose, okay. and someone is going to bring her agriculture dog and talk about how, how dogs play a role in, in sniffing out um, possible problems in terms of agriculture. So that was very popular because yes. the dog comes along with Barbara Maresca, who's the presenter, but the dog is there too, which is <laughs> awesome. We love that. Um, who else do we have this year confirmed so far? We have um, um, Dr. Yvonne Chan is going to be presenting a session called Make Your Own DNA Necklace, where girls are going to be um, doing a cheek swab and extracting their own DNA and uh -huh. then making a necklace out of their own DNA. So that's Pretty exciting. Pretty thin necklace. I guess so. <laughs> we also have a session on GPS, and it's going to be real uh, scientific research that'll be put into a database. Oh, excellent. So that'll be exciting. Great. And a code like a girl kind of uh, activity where they learn about coding, mm -hmm. sure. computer mm -hmm. right. coding. That's, of course, very popular. Okay. So now you say that so that the parents sort of optionally can come if they are able to? They don't have to, yeah. I assume. Yeah, that's correct. The parent portion, we don't have the parents stay with their daughters, as uh, Marisa was saying. The, the parents will go to their own session. Mm -hmm. The girls go off on their own, and then there's a, uh, the parent session consists of hearing about AAUW and the um, solving the equation uh, research that we're going to talk to them about. There's going to be a STEM panel. Uh, letting them know about uh, careers in STEM. Okay, so like, such as these topics that are showing on the screen now? Yeah, that, that's for the tech savvy, for the girls. The, um, and the parents, they, they stay together the whole time. They don't go to different sessions. Okay. So there's going to be some information about college, uh, how to get into college and Okay. And they'll have a hands-on session too probably with the GPS research. Uh -huh. And at the end, they'll all come together to hear our keynote, which is Sarah Hudgens, the uh -huh. pilot. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. And so, how many people were last year's session? Probably? There's a little over 100. Uh -huh. This year we're thinking about um, maybe 100 to 150 uh, girls and 50 parents. Uh -huh. okay. So quite, quite a bit larger. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a so it was a success last year. It was a success. Yeah, excellent. A lot of excellent. positive responses to yeah. it, definitely. Well, it very much needed because particularly in some of these the more uh, technological engineering fields, uh, women are very poorly represented, shall we say. Yes. yes. Underrepresented. Uh, and, which is surprising because um, uh, engineering, as I was, re was recently taught by the, the, the Dean of Engineering at UH Monroe, is, is a very creative field. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, where, People go into it because of its creativity. He insists mm -hmm. they're drawn to it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Whereas my impression was that engineering is not. It's, it's considered a very dry field. <laughs> I'm obviously wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of the um one of the really important aspects of the Tech Savvy Day is that both the Tech Savvy sessions and then the Savvy Skill sessions that Anna mentioned mm -hmm. earlier are all being led by women who are yeah. in their fields because part of the purpose of the Tech Savvy Day is, is to show girls, middle school girls, mm -hmm. role models in those fields so they can you know, envision themselves becoming a scientist, an engineer. Um, Absolutely. It's critical. Uh, you know, if you don't have anyone who's like you in a, in a higher role in, in, a, in a field like that, you don't, you don't believe that you right. belong there at all. Absolutely. Yeah. And the hands-on aspect helps them see that they can actually be doing things that are fun, too. Mm -hmm. And they'll be with other girls, and it's okay to make mistakes and learn from your mistakes, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that'll be a very positive experience for that's, them. Yeah, that, that's critical, again, is, is to get people really engaged in, in some, something at least somewhat authentic, mm -hmm. uh, but much more than just, you know, read a chapter, answer the questions at the end, <laughs> you know, right. that, that, kind of, that kind of thing. Uh, so these, these softer skills I know are becoming, and they're also shown on another one of the slides, are becoming quite a, recognized as quite important to people's success in the, in the workplace, particularly. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, these are skills, these savvy skills that they're learning are actually skills that they can use in their daily lives. And a lot of them, as it shows there, communication, mm -hmm. um, interviewing skills, financial literacy, knowledge about that, just a lot of, um, skills that they can use, like I said, in their daily lives that will help them. Sure, sure. Uh, but workplace, family, I mean, almost everywhere, you know, knowing, yes, knowing how to be a good communicator is certainly, certainly critical. <laughs> okay. 
We, uh, we have, can I tell you about a few of our sessions that we have confirmed so far? Absolutely. So we have uh, Dr. Chuck Nguyen, who's at UH, and she's going to be doing a session basically on your digital footprint to help girls kind of understand that what you're putting out there into the digital world right so now yes. will follow you uh -huh. into college applications, job applications, so how, can, how you can be really a responsible user of technology in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Gwen Maeda, who's going to be doing a financial literacy game that Anna can talk yep. a little bit about that game. It's actually going to be done by a group of junior high school uh, gals that are, uh, it's a game where you, it's almost like Monopoly, but it's playing with your finances and when you save and when you spend and how you end up with some cash on hand. So it's a game that kids will really enjoy playing. Very, very critical for kids to learn those skills early on rather mm -hmm. than they don't start saving until they're 45 or 50. It's, <laughs> it's way too late for retirement. Too late. <laughs> that's right. And we have one more confirmed session. That's um, Mega Kim who's going to be doing a session on communication and using Legos to kind of demonstrate principles about, about communication, getting your point across. Um, not thought of Legos as a Isn't that interesting? <laughs> That's right. Uh, engineering tool, yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Both. Very nice. Excellent, excellent. Well, well uh, that sounds uh, sounds like like you got some great stuff lined up there. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, tell me, uh, go a little more in, in depth then on this college savvy piece. Okay, um, college savvy. We have so far we have eleven. We hope to get fifteen different groups from all the different colleges on. Um, Oahu, we also have UH Hilo coming over to uh, do a session. And the representatives have a table, so it looks sort of like a college fair where they're sitting at a table, but the girls are going to bring an application to the table. And the application tells about their interests and uh, likes and some of their skills. And the representative, instead of just uh, talking about their college or their organization, they'll draw out from the conversation with the girls, what do you think you might do? Oh, you like. Um, you like art? Well, there's a career in STEM that you can actually use art, and at our uh, university, this is what you might take. So the girls go and they have their application stamped by the representative, and at the end of the time, um, if, if they've had uh, at least uh, 10 stamps, they get a little ticket for our at the end of the day. And we have uh, all the campuses of the UH, we have West Oahu, we have the uh, University of Notre Dame, possibly Creighton, and uh, different organizations like uh, the YWCA and uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, the Naval Shipyard, so different groups as well as uh, the um, colleges. Excellent. Well, we're going to go into this in more depth here when we come back. Right now, we're going to take a short break. Uh, I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science. We're talking about tech savvy mm -hmm. with Lauren, Anna, and Marisa from AAW. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna. I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. You can see our show every Wednesday at noon at 12 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com, as well as visiting YouTube and finding the link for the show there. The show is also aired on OC16. We look forward to seeing you on the show. Uh, we have many wonderful guests, uh, including Joan Husted, Corey Rosenley, where we talk about the very important issues of education for our keiki. We look forward to seeing you there. Mahalo. Aloha, namaskar, and hello. I am Anu Hittel, and I host a show on climate change. It's called Climate Change Beyond Outrage. And in it, we go beyond outrage to look at solutions to global climate problems facing people, nations, and the world. Join me every Tuesday at 1 o'clock Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha, namaskar, and goodbye. <laughs> and we're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, I'm here with Marisa, Anna, and Lauren, all of AAUW, the various committees for their Tech Savvy Conference that we're talking about on May 21st, all day. You should go and register for it. Uh, we were talking about sort of the tech savvy sessions. We talked a little bit about the college sessions, and you, but your third component is sort of interesting. You have you have a parent component to this. Yeah, and to, to kind of follow up on what Anna was saying about the college savvy, this year we have planned a college savvy session for the parents because uh -huh. we noticed that last year they were sneaking out of the parent session uh -huh. to go see the college savvy because they wanted to talk to the college reps. They had questions. So as part of the parent program this year, we are including college savvy um, for the parents to go talk to, to the various tables. In addition, um, really we start the day with some history of AEUW so okay. parents can kind of understand why 
this program came about, where it's coming from, and then moving into the Solving it, the Equation report that AAUW put out, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, because that kind of forms the, the rationale for why this event is held. Um, also, part, part of the parent program is going to be having a STEM panel, who are women in different stages of their careers in STEM, that can answer some questions and, and answer questions from parents, and especially kind of getting parents to think about what women need to, to kind of go into STEM and sustain a STEM career and what they can do starting now with their middle school girls to encourage them and support them if they're interested in pursuing a STEM career. Um, and then we also have a component on really preparing to get into college, so things like financial aid and um, course taking in high school. Right. No, it's, it's, it's really critical because I think a lot of the uh, research is showing that certainly by the end of middle school years, if not by the start of middle school years, uh, girls are increasingly moving away from STEM fields in, in terms of what they want to study, how they envision mm -hmm. themselves, um, all that kind of stuff. And so it's a, it's a uh, crucial sort of tipping point. Uh, and to do things like this to help them uh, affirm their skills, their interests, uh, put, up, put those role models in front of them, uh, all that is, is really, I think, a, a very powerful way to, mm -hmm. to help uh, address this, um, <laughs> this equation that we're, that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. And so you had mentioned this report. Uh, yeah, there's a report, and it's done through the National Office of AAUW, and every tech savvy conference needs to address the research that was done called Solving the Equation. Basically, there are more and more girls taking uh, science and math courses, but the increase in entering the fields is not uh, happening. Even, and the two big fields that it's not happening is computing and engineering. Back in 1960, there were 35% of the uh, professionals in the field were women, and in 2013, there were only 26%. Oh. So we're going in the, the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. More women started out in computing, and there are less of them now. And it's even more dire in engineering, where mm -hmm. only 12% of the engineers are female. So this report was done thinking, what, why are the, what are the factors that are involved in not having women in these two careers? And they came up with um, stereotypes, bias, college curriculum, and work environment that are the big factors in why women aren't being uh, represented um, the way they should be. And it's even worse for women of color, um, which make up about 18% of the population in the ages between 20 and 24. They get about 18% of the undergraduate degrees, and they're, they're only 12% of those folks in the, in the workforce. So looking at those factors of bias, and bias may not be overt, it may be implicit, where we don't even think that we're getting bias. And so we have to figure out ways that those kinds of careers do not use bias against women. And in the, uh, the, the work of the Solving the Equation, they came up with some studies that were done. And there was one where they had uh, a hypothetical job and candidates with the same basic backgrounds, the same kind of resumes, uh, overwhelmingly scientists chose the male over the female. Mm -hmm. And even when it comes to higher salaries, both uh, male and female scientists will give a higher salary to the male component. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other study that they looked at is um, looking at women's cr uh, girls' cred credentials for mathematics, and they'll score men higher even with the same kind of credentials. So they wanted to say, well, why, why, why do people have this bias? And there, there are different factors that go into it. And basically, it's that. Um, Young girls don't have role models. They don't see women in these careers. They think it's a men, man's mm -hmm. job. So what Tech Savvy is trying to do is show that, yes, women can be in these careers. And these careers can find some strengths that we know that women already have, like communication, mm -hmm. organization, innovation, creativity, that those components are within these fields as well. Right, because again, the, the, there is some misunderstanding of what fields like engineering are about and what they involve, what kinds of skills are useful in engineering. Yeah, and then one of the things that they also looked at in the, is the college uh, curriculum. How can they help the, the college curriculum get to where girls are wanting to go in and be in computing and engineering majors? And Harvey Mudd actually solved part of this. Uh, they uh, uh, wanted to get more women into the, the computing program, so they decided that freshman year, the basic course, they would divide it into two different groups. One group with um, 
background and, and experience doing computing and one group that did not have as much experience. And a lot of the girls went into the, the group that didn't have the experience and they were able to ask questions because they didn't know the, um, all the information yet. And they grew as much as the group that was already had some computing background. The other component that they did at Harvey Mudd was um, after the first year of study, they allowed the students to pick uh, research uh, topics that they could actually go out into the field and do instead of waiting until they were seniors to go out and do some research. And they took a lot of the girls to the um, Grace Hopper Women in Computing Conference so that they could meet mentors. And those mentors convinced and helped the, the gals stay on target and get through four years. And so their um, Harvey Mudd's uh, over five years, they grew from 12% to like 40% of their graduates being female. Excellent. So, so problems can be solved. <laughs> wonderful, problems. wonderful. That's, that's very powerful, and mm -hmm. it's, it's great that people are working on it, paying attention to the data like that, uh, and, and looking at all these different kinds of factors uh, that, that influence this from very subtle biases, very pervasive biases. Um, yeah. Uh, there's, there's fascinating work on that, that whole uh, business now of, of sort of these uh, unconscious biases that we have and, and what people can do about them and, and, and subtle ways to, to break those associations that you have. Yeah. Uh, and, and one other thing in the study was also there, they wanted to find out why are women not staying in these careers? Mm -hmm. there, there seems to be women enter the career and then they leave it. Mm -hmm. And they found that work environment is a major factor where you may be one of few women, there aren't very many women that are the same kind of level of uh, uh, career that, uh, mm -hmm. as you go up the ranks and that um, there's not a sense of that your job is giving back to the community. So for employers to let everyone see the uh, social goals of computing and engineering helps women stay invested and being able to balance work and non-work life. So. Right, there's, there's, certainly I know that's been a, been a huge issue for years is, is that, that work-life balance because of course in our culture traditionally women do much more of the child care and that mm -hmm. means they get pulled away from in particular academic careers that's just sort of devastating if you can't do 120 percent of your time to your career early, in early stages mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's very important to, to bring these have these conversations uh, talk about them have the organizations that are sort of in part responsible looking looking at these issues trying to figure out creative ways to deal with it mm -hmm. wonderful wonderful and I mean, it really does, it, it covers that whole span of, of some, some really sort of no-brainer stuff, but down to some very subtle things. So it's, it's, it's quite, uh, quite a complex sort of inter, interlinked set of, uh, of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, when, you get, when you pull this conference together, how do you measure the success of it? Well, we have a survey that we use. We have a pre and a post survey. Um, basically, we wanted to see if we moved the needle from girls coming in and not knowing anything about STEM careers and not having any interest in it. And then after an, a day of activities that they, they do have an interest in and maybe would be pursuing it. So that's the survey portion. And that gets sent back to the national headquarters. So they, they're doing a big study on all of this. And just hearing from the girls, you know, we got some um, girls that were willing to tell us about what they liked mm -hmm. about the conference and kind of took that to heart for this year's. I think, actually, I think we actually have a couple of the videos, right, okay. talking about some of those girls that, that uh... My first class was to eat plastic. You need the help of your friends. And I learned that microbes were the only organisms that can digest plastic. Neat. And how about you? What did you, what was your workshop? Um, I went to an hour of code, which is like, we learn code for different things, like how video game makers make their games, and like, how codes are like, with everything in the world, basically. So, like, um, the code of what you do, and like, how it's like very step by step by step. Cool. Uh, a nice, nice video. The, the, the second girl that I was making, I think, a really good point is coding is becoming almost a basic communication skill now. There's some school districts I know are beginning to consider should, should coding be just sort of in part of the curriculum from day one. Mm -hmm. I think that Florida passed a, a law that said that it's going to be accepted as a world language for their 
graduation requirements. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, excellent, mm. excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. And, uh, but when, when you were talking about measuring the success, so you, you talked about uh, that you moved the needle on some knowledge of careers and of, of STEM options, I guess, and a little bit maybe on the, on the attitude. Is there, is there a way to measure this longer term? I mean, yes, it's one thing you, you go to a conference, you, at the end of the day, you're checking, filling out your form, you're all excited, charged up, of course, you know, you're gonna rate things better. But do they, do you go back six months later and see if they're? Well, I think that the national organization is doing that. Uh -huh. That's why they are sponsoring Tech Savvy across the country. They're keeping all this data mm -hmm. and they are going to be compiling uh, the information that they get to do some more studies and look to see uh, where we're going. Interesting. And I wonder if you uh, are, are going to see some of the same girls come, come back through a second time. Well, you know? we're, we're going to we're contact the, right. the girls that came last year, and hopefully if they haven't aged out, that they'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That, that, well, that's great. It sounds like a very exciting program. And we're going to uh, dig a little deeper into it in our third segment. But uh, right now, we're going to take another little break. Okay. Ethan Allen here, uh, AAUW's Tech Savvy Conference. Marisa, Anna, and Lauren here talking about all, all the fun, fun things to do and the value of this too. Aloha, this is Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to inform, motivate, and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy Maria Mera y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe Viva Hawaii en Think Tech Hawaii cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. Aloha. Hello, my name is Patrick Bratton. I'm host of Global Connections here at Think Tech Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday at 1 p.m. We bring Hawaii to the world and the world to Hawaii, talking about international events and various things of interest to the audience. Please join me. I look forward to talking with you and having you get, get to meet some of my guests. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. And you're back here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. You're on Likeable Science with us here on Friday afternoon. And we're talking Tech Savvy, this upcoming conference on May 21st. Uh, we have uh, three representatives from AAUW here, uh, Lauren, Anna, and Marisa. And the, the question sort of came up during, during the, the last little break about sort of what is AAUW, why are they doing this, uh, how, how does this fit in with their, their bigger picture? And Marisa, you were going to... Yes. Uh, AAUW is the, uh, stands for American Association of University Women. And what it is is a nonprofit organization that advances the equity of women through research, through education, through philanthropy, and through um, advocacy. And Tech Savvy is a program within AUW that they sponsor nationally. And what AUW is, is committed to encouraging women and girls to pursue STEM. Uh, we have a multi-pronged um, uh, approach to that, research being one of them, and, and Anna went into that mm -hmm. in regards to solving the equation. The other three prongs are um, STEM, uh, STEM programs, which is Tech Savvy. Uh, being one of them. We also have a tech trek that we haven't quite yet um, <laughs> come, come with, which is a week-long summer camp. And so that's a big one. But right now we're going to um, focus on Tech Savvy, which is our day-long um, STEM conference. Um, another one is uh, AUW invests. They invest in, in the things that um, they're committed to. And so STEM education, uh, our keynote speaker is actually one of the uh, scholarship recipients of uh, AUW uh, scholarships. Wonderful. And AUW have scholarships for, for uh, women um, and girls pursuing education as well as STEM careers and just a, a multitude of things that um, AUW uh, backs up with, uh, with uh, investing in these women. Uh, lastly, the, the other prong is they actually have a voice on Capitol Hill. There are uh, uh, advocates uh, on Capitol Hill. Um, they have a national policy strategy and advocates that are there, um, strong grassroots and motivated volunteer ad advocates to really um, 
drive what AUW is committed to, which is removing those stereotypes, removing those biases that uh, women and girls face. Excellent. Uh, it needs to be done. Desperately needs to be done. Um, there's just reading an article in a uh, recent issue of Science about there's been several rather ugly cases recently of uh, sexual harassment in, in various scientific mm -hmm. fields of, mm -hmm. that had gone on for quite a few years before being sort of re realized, recognized, and sort of appropriately dealt with. And, and it's, it, it shouldn't. I mean, clearly it should be dealt with immediately and, and clearly so. Um, we have, I know, one other brief video uh, of a couple, a couple of girls uh, at your last conference, I believe, from last year. Mm -hmm. and so what was your favorite class? The dive down deep. Why? Because we made like algae pressing and we learned about like what she does for a job. Neat. How about you? I liked the um, yeah. chocolate, the sweet topping no, side. Because it, she, it was like cool to see how the chocolate was like processed and made. Okay, well, neat. Thank you. That's, that's nice. So there were di different kinds of sessions. You're not just repeating sessions from last year. It sounds no. like you're, you know, we'll, we'll have things. different sessions from last year. So hopefully they'll they'll be exactly mm -hmm. as engaging and inspiring mm -hmm. as last year's mm -hmm. sessions, but not exactly the same. And that c kind of to your question earlier about will we have repeat girls? Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that if there were repeat girls, that mm -hmm. they would have a variety of options that were different from last year's sessions. Excellent. Did, did you record the sessions last year? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this year we're actually hiring a photographer to take, uh, we're going to give a shoot sheet to him so that he mm -hmm. can go and take the pictures that we really want to see and, and some little short videos and get some, uh, the girls doing some hands-on things too. So Excellent. we'll yeah, have some more material next year, which we didn't have. It was our first year and we were kind right. of... Um, just, just getting up and running yeah, was, was, <laughs> a, was a challenge. Yeah. We learned a lot, though. Yes. We learned a lot from yes. doing it last year. We had a whole year. little lessons learned session where we said that these are things we need to, to uh, change so that we can make it better this year. And yeah. I think we were doing that. Uh, no, I, I, I understand and appreciate that. I'm, I, I'm working with the Hawaii Public Health Association getting a conference going. Mm -hmm. We're running off to a meeting right after this. <laughs> <laughs> So, and it was great. you mentioned earlier that, that you had Microsoft involved in, in your uh, yes. registration process. So are they actually loaning some of their technology or putting some of their technological know-how to work? Or is it people right. or both? People or bo both, actually. Okay. Their devices, their people. Um, Microsoft is just one of the, the, the community partners that we've uh, partnered with, along with, um, we have HPU. Yeah, and the uh, Pacific Aviation Museum. Okay. They're going to come. They're going to have a table there. They're also going to sponsor one of the... Um, girls to win a scholarship to their conference that they're having for uh, aviation and um, I think I'm going to be talking with somebody from Pacific Aviation Museum yeah, next week. Yeah, oh, perfect. Another sponsor <laughs> is Hawaiian Electric Companies. They've oh. been a, a generous sponsor uh, partner with us. And um, Mocha Lily, they're, they're going to fly over the three presenters from Maui to come to our conference so they're mm -hmm. helping us. So we have some very generous uh, donors that are helping us get this uh, together and it's going to be a great day. Uh, it's May 21st. It's a Saturday. It starts about 8 o'clock for the girls that haven't registered. They're going to be able to use the iPads to check in or to register that we'll be using for Microsoft. And I know we've got a slide that has the registration information on it, too, mm -hmm. in that deck of slides, which we probably should put on up so that people will know where to go. Yeah. It, it's open, basically, as I understand, to any middle school age girl? Yes, grades 6 through ninth grade. Okay. They can go online and pay online for the conference. It's only $5 for girls, okay. and it's $10 for adults. The, uh, the conference starts around 8 o'clock and ends at 4.30 okay. after the keynote. It's a full day, and oh, yeah. it's at Hawaii Pacific University, their Kaneohe campus, which is a beautiful setting. The uh, application, I'm being told, says it's closed. Well, the, uh, the registration will not start until um, April 21st. Ah, so we, are, we have to have all of our presenters named with their, the sessions that they're going to do. Then we submit it to the national office. They review it to make sure that it's uh, all the T's uh, are crossed yes. and the I's are dotted. And then <laughs> the so the registration site will actually be through the um, the national office. Okay, so there's going to have to be some big push then around April 21st to well, say registration is now open. And we do have a push. We're going to have bus ads yes. okay. ads on every one of the buses mm -hmm. that are going to be about tech savvy, and there, there's going to be a QR code on the the ad that you can just use your phone to. Uh, 
register interest. Okay. Uh, and if you'll send me a reminder, I'd, I'd be glad to mention it again on the show. Or, oh, or absolutely. Thank would, you. Would, uh, would push it up. Uh, uh, you know, push it out, but that's uh, that sounds great. So it, it's it's great to get that that kinds of, of multiple, so sort of, sort of educational, but also commercial sponsors. And again, it's really mm -hmm. important to send that message that, that women can go into academic roles, they can go into commercial, industrial roles. That they're, they're again on these wide range mm -hmm. of things that they can they can pursue anything they want to in, in that's STEM. Right. So that, that's that's truly uh, truly good that your uh, conference organization sort of re reflects that then. Yeah, and we want to think, have them thinking about um, computing is not just coding. It's all kinds of different things about how you use a computer. And I don't think there's anything that you can possibly do in any career now without having a computer attached to it. Oh, so right. there are lots of different ways that girls can go with uh, coding. They're, and they're more, more and more pervasive in our lives every day. <laughs> and, uh, and engineering is a wide open field. It's not oh. the same four or five different majors. It's there are multiple avenues that. Uh, girls can look at and get excited about. Right, yeah, engineering used to be strictly sort of a, a structural mechanical or maybe electrical thing. Now mm -hmm. there's bioengineering, chemical engineering, all these, mm -hmm. these different kinds of yeah. things and lots of subspecialties within those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we want to increase when they have more women in engineering right. so that it doesn't have such a, a narrow amount of right. women. And the slide that I think that's on the screen, um, you can see that the, the Asian and Pacific Island women is 0.04%. That is such a small wow. group of women that are in the uh, workforce in engineering. Wow, that's, just, yeah, that's truly, <laughs> truly bad underrepresentation. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the big green area is the uh, white men. Uh, <coughs> that's, uh, I guess, not surprising. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we certainly, uh, and again, uh, all the, the data is now showing that having a, a diverse workforce is it's good for the companies too. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I was yes. recently hearing a talk on, on the fact that the, those companies that have strong female leadership mm -hmm. economically do better. They they, mm -hmm. they survive better. They have higher employee morale. Mm -hmm. They make more money. They get sort of less legal trouble. Uh, they have sort of a whole bunch of pluses, you know. So yeah. it's, uh, and I think that there was also part of that study was that when you go into fields like engineering and computing yet uh, a bigger return on your investment. When you go to become a doctor, there's a lot of years and a lot of expense. Mm -hmm. that <laughs> takes a long time to pay back. Right. But if you can go into computing or engineering and get a job with a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. then you're certainly going to get higher investment on your return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're seeing, I mean, there's a lot of groups now who are teaching very intense sort of coding boot camps mm -hmm. and app making uh, intensive experiences. Mm -hmm. yes. In some cases, I gather people don't even necessarily even have to have a bachelor's. You go in there and, and if you, you prove that you're a good coder, a good mm -hmm. app maker, you, mm -hmm. you can walk out and, and find yourself a job. Mm -hmm. uh, pe people pay, pay very good money for you if you, if you have that talent, right? Mm -hmm. yes. and I think it kind of illustrates what we've been talking about. You, you know, you had asked about what evidence do we have and, and when you look at some of the numbers, some of the figures, you can see that this is a, a long term um, issue that it won't be tackled in a one day conference right. mm -hmm. and well you know kind of projecting down into what do these girls do when they get to high school what do they do when they get past high school mm -hmm. what do they do when they get into the workforce so hopefully you know organizations like AUW who are really making this investment in multiple ways are um, are kind of playing that that longer game there, right? It's yes. it's not about the one day. It's mm -hmm. about really changing the mindsets and attitudes, so that 20 years down the road, we we see a shift in in those numbers. We we make a, a change in that needle there. Ab absolutely, that 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 whole both the, the structural and the sort of cultural element to, mm -hmm. to really mm -hmm. help people understand that it, it's fine. You know, women women can and should be represented appropriately in, mm -hmm. in proportion in any field at all, and, and there's no reason they shouldn't. Um, I, uh, things like football, yeah, you probably don't expect women to be in, in pro football so much, but you know, uh, a few weird exceptions like that, uh, that there's no real reason that it, should, that it shouldn't happen, but it, it's, it's a, a long, I mean, it's been, it's, it has a long history and it's, it's very hard to change. Uh, so AAW is, uh, deserves much credit for pushing on it, and as you say, play, playing, sort of playing the long game, and so we're mm -hmm. saying, yeah, we're just going to keep pushing this and pushing at it and mm -hmm. pushing at it because it's it's got to change and if we all push together at it, it will change. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's right. Well, that, that's that's absolutely wonderful that you're doing this. Um, so wrapping up, do you have a message that you want to uh, put out to, the, to girls? 
Um, we'd like to see them come to Tech Savvy on May 21st and to bring your parents, but you don't have to. Um, and we'd like to see you really think about uh, entering the STEM field and um, enjoy the day and, and all the activities that we have planned. I think it'll be a fun day um, for everybody. Excellent. Risa? Just, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you out there. and. Um, it's just going to be a really fun day for them to learn uh, more about the STEM activities, uh, meet uh, women, real women in the, in, the, in the industry that they're interested in, and maybe even um, create some interest in some things that the girls hadn't thought of before. So we're looking forward to it. Wonderful. Yeah, and I just want to follow on that with, um, you know, for the girls who know they're already interested in STEM, obviously we expect them to, to be interested, but if you don't already know that you're interested in STEM, please sign up and, yes. and come out and, and keep an open mind and, and try what we have for you and maybe you will be interested in STEM by the end of the day. Wonderful. Make it, make it a, a real growth learning experience. That's Absolutely. Right. Excellent. Well, that's great. I, I so much appreciate you guys being here and, and talking about this. Uh, it sounds like a really exciting conference and, and I'm, I wish I could go. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and again, your registration is going to be April 21st, you said. The conference is May 21st. Yes. And so the word will be out there about how to register. And, mm -hmm. uh, Look for the bus ads. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. that, that's, that's a great, right. way, great way to get it on out. <laughs> well, I thank you guys so much, all of you, Marisa, and Thanks Laura. Thanks for having me. It was, thank it was you. So, so good of you to come and, and spend your time and, and help talk, inform me about this. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you. Aloha to you all. Aloha. Aloha. And we are uh, finishing up another episode of Likeable Science. We'll be back next week uh, here on Think Tech Hawaii.